Well, hey, everybody. The lighting looks really weird. Yeah, we, weird lighting. Well, remember we changed it earlier yeah. because we were you were moving all the RGB lights around. Yeah, that's so, weird. So that's why. Different. There's not one in the back anymore, right, and right, that right. one's different, and yeah, all this yeah. other kind of crap. You know what yeah. I mean? Don't worry about it. There you go. <laughs> we're we're changing color now. Well, yeah, because we had it doing yeah. some exciting yeah. shit for yeah. something we were filming earlier. Yep. That's so, good. Let it go. You know, it's fine. So, yeah, it's Sunday, and it's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to any of you mothers out there. I'm just a cat mom, but you know what I mean. So, uh, so yeah. So, today, we are going to be talking about, as I uh, hinted earlier, Bad Lieutenant, because Xanada sent us not only Bad Lieutenant, but also The Professional, which is probably, like, the next one that we're going to be doing. Yeah. But we actually, uh, you know, had some cocktails last night and watched Bad Lieutenant. <laughs> it's a good movie. It is. It's, it's weird. It's but... actually a great movie. Well, it's yeah. Abel Ferreira, so um, you know his movies are always kind of like that. This was actually the one that he made after King of New York. So like yeah. King of New York with Christopher Walken came out in 1990, and then this one came out in 1992. And actually, Christopher Walken was supposed to be in this one too. He was supposed to be the bad lieutenant, right. uh, but he backed out about three weeks before they started shooting it. Uh, and Abel Ferreira was a little put out about I it. I wonder why. Um, I think that he, I don't know. I think it was a thing. I saw like a quote earlier, like on another thing about this, where they were saying that um, they think that Harvey Keitel, like it ended up working because Harvey Keitel was not super jazzed about it either. Uh, the story goes that he got the script and read a few pages of it and then threw it in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> He liked it. But um but well he said later on he's like it wasn't that bad but he yeah. like he wrote he read some of it and he's like there's no way I'm going to be in this fucking movie yeah. but then like he kind of thought about it and then he's like well you know how many chances do I get to be like a lead in something like this and and I have to say that Harvey Keitel man he fucking went for it in this it's one of the great uh just letting it all hang out acting performances let's call it that way let's call it like that you know what I mean where he just not, I mean, yeah, he's naked in it and stuff, which is a very famous scene, but also just in the sense of letting himself look like the biggest fucking sleaze yeah. imaginable, pretty much, and also just opening himself up and being like just this, um, like this emotional devastation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and just like howling and <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> so it is like a very, very brave performance, I will say that. I think he did a good job. He's great in this. Yeah. Well, the thing about it was that I saw someone, and I can't remember what the quote was, but they, when they were talking about Christopher Walken, and they're like, they weren't sure if Christopher Walken could, would have been the same in this because they said that Christopher Walken was too, quote unquote, elegant. Yeah. Um, whereas Harvey Keitel is not elegant. Yeah. We were talking about this last night when we were watching the movie because Tom said the thing about Harvey Keitel is he's not a big dude. No. Um, so you wouldn't think that he's super, like, be super intimidating, but there's just something about him that's just, like, really scary. Yeah, I'm trying to place his height based on his environment and the people who are around him and, you know, long shots where you can see his feet touching the ground, and I think he's my size, about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, and uh, he took his clothes off for that one scene, though, and um, he he's shredded. He he's uh, I would say he was up there with fucking um, Charles Bronson. A lot of people don't realize Charles Bronson was shredded too. Uh, but he doesn't look he doesn't look shredded or intimidating in suits or in clothing. You don't know, you know. But um, he's definitely been on gear. Works out. Um, when you see him with his clothes off, you're like, yeah, he probably could whip your ass. And even yeah. like even if he didn't look like that, there's just yeah. something about he's one of those actors. I guess kind of Oliver Reed was like this too, and like some of, where they just feel like they're just constantly teetering on the edge of madness, and yeah. they just like you feel they you feel like if you met them and they and you piss them off, they yeah. would just like tear your fucking head off because yeah. there's like a little bit of crazy yeah. shit going on. It's like he comes across like that very much. Well, Kytel, I'm sure this, he's a nice person in real life. He's probably fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kytel in this one, he's uh, playing this cop. Oh, he's, and dude's got no supervision, all right? <laughs> Clearly. Uh, the other cops on the New York force with him, you know, they're gambling and doing shit, but 
they're not they're not all that great those guys you know what I mean they they don't really don't care about the crime that's happening there's nothing they can really do about it they just do their job investigating and shit like you know they're they find a car with some girls that have been fucking dome checked you know both of them and in the shot middle of up. Union Square yeah and fucking Kaitel walks up and looks at him he's just checking out the tits on the one he's going to look at her tits they, they show that he's looking at her tits yeah the dead body which I was like yeah and then. Keep they, it classy, Harvey. Yeah, and then they go back. <laughs> Looking at the dead Go back to talk to each other about whether or not the Dodgers are going to win this World Series. Yeah, it's not. I think I don't think it's the World Series. I think it's like the lead up to the it's World lead Series up to or World something. Right. I don't know anything about sports ball. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't really give a shit either. No, uh, but either. they're sitting there placing bets, <laughs> and he's talking about how much money he's going to win. You know, and he says the Dodgers are going to win. It's a safe bet. You know, and that's really the th- what the movie's about. He keeps falling deeper and deeper into debt. Because of these bets, at the end he owes one hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, that's right. And he basically owns it to the mob. If yeah. He doesn't have the money; they, they're going to kill him, which they do. In the uh, like, well, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> well, this is going on. He knows all the hookers and all the drug dealers, and he's giving them evidence, uh, or they're giving him drugs out, out of the evidence room and having them. Sell yeah, like it for he him. takes it from crime scenes yeah. and stuff because you see it. him doing that. Like one uh, time, like they're they're like, oh, there's a key of coke in the car, and he's just yeah. like, oh, really? I'm gonna go check that car out. <laughs> yeah. And then he shows up, you know. The next, and then you see him. He's uh, hanging out. With, I guess his two call girls, and they got having a threesome going on, and he's just getting high and acting a fool, really. Going like he's losing his mind because he's under a lot of pressure and shit. He's got a family, got kids, but he, he doesn't really seem to care too much about him. Uh, he spends most of his time running around with hookers and drug dealers and shit. There's this real good-looking heroin dealer girl that he keeps visiting. She She's played by the girl who, I think, helped write this. Zoe Lund. Zoe Lund. She actually wrote the screenplay for this. And if you've seen yeah. uh, Ms. 45, which is probably one of Abel Ferrer's, like, that's actually my favorite Abel Ferrer <coughs> movie. Yeah. Um, she plays the nun in that. Yeah. Um, sadly, because there's a scene in this, and she's quite famous, like, as a screenwriter and stuff, and sort of, uh, you know, the hip New York... Uh, kind of scene of the 80s. She was kind of big up on that. But um, very unapologetic heroin addict. Uh, yeah. She was pretty much, uh, you know, kind of one of those New York artists where she's like, yeah, she'd have hair and what the fuck. And like she talked about it quite openly. Um, so there is a scene in the film where she's mainlining yeah. heroin. And that is absolutely real. She did actually do that uh, yep, for the movie. I can tell. And uh, yeah, because Tom said, "Yeah, that looks real," and I said, "I'm imagining that is real because that's Zoe that's what she Lund does. Yeah. was uh, was a known heroin addict, and like yeah. I said, she was not ashamed of it. She and they had actually ended up killing her uh, in the end. She died in 1999. I think she was only 37. Yeah, and she was uh, gorgeous. She was a beautiful. Gorgeous, she was yeah. a beautiful woman. Yeah, she looked. She looked, she was a model in real life. She looks like a supermodel. Actually, yeah. better better looking than a lot of supermodels. Me, a lot of supermodels was like plain. She's just super pretty. It's too skinny though. I mean, she's she's uh, she's very thin, yeah. But uh, so the the bad lieutenant is uh, visiting her and hanging out with her and buying heroin from her and stuff and doing heroin with her. I don't think they had sex though, did they? No, they, they not, the, really not the two of them. No. Yeah, but he's having sex with the other ones, with the other hookers. And um, he come eventually. He comes across this case where this gorgeous nun gets raped by two scumbags and they fuck the church up and steal a chalice. And they put a reward out for the chalice and Kaitel, he's a Catholic. But he, he thinks the church is a racket though. He doesn't believe anything about it. And then he's like, he's like, why is the church putting, the church put a big uh, reward out for the chalice. They want the chalice back. Yeah, it's like 50 grand or something. Yeah. And Ka- Kaitel's just kind of scoffing at it. He's like, man, chicks get raped all the time in New York and the church is fucking making a big deal over this type of deal. And the other cops are like, man, you're an asshole, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, well, this church is just a racket, you know. Well, eventually... Which is true, but he's still an asshole. Yeah, he's an that. asshole. But... <laughs> well, he goes to see the nun. The nun smoking hot, young. 
which I've never seen that in personal life. Most nuns I've well, I mean, seen. The, well, the thing about it is, like, yeah, you kind of see nuns that are like these old, like, crotchety old ladies, but yeah. it's like they were probably young and hot at some point. Uh, like, I'm, in sh- the church, bro. I'm sure, like, some yeah. young, beautiful women, like, yeah. jo- like joined the... Not in my experience. Well, no, but I'm just saying there had to be at least yeah, one somewhere. Sometime. Not the, ca- <laughs> not the Catholic Church, at least. You know, fucking... Why would you yeah. want to do that to yourself? I mean, yeah. you know, it's like everybody's got their own thing. I get it. I'm yeah. not judging, but I'm just saying... So <laughs> why would you subject? He goes yourself? and meets. He, yeah, every nun I knew was a mean old lesbian. Actually, one of them worked. One of them was an ex nun. She worked for a company that I worked for, and she was a top seller, man. She was a fucking real good salesperson. Her and her wife, I guess. She was just a mean old lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> and then she talked bad about the church too. I imagine it's a, a lot of people that have. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, yeah. like I said, it is. But. They just kind of outgrow it. Um, anyway. So he meets the nun and uh, tries. they try to get details out of the nun and she's not talking. She Even won't. though she knows who did it. She knows the dude's names. Because, knows. well, yeah. Harvey Keitel, who actually, I didn't realize this. Well, I did kind of when I was watching the movie, but then like I wanted to make sure when I checked like afterward when I was researching. But yeah, they never, he doesn't have a name. They never name him. Like, yeah. nobody ever calls just him. Call him lieutenant. Everybody just calls him Lieutenant. So yeah. it's like he's never named, which is interesting. And I, I'm pretty sure that was a deliberate choice, like yeah. from a maybe dehumanization standpoint. I'm not yeah. really sure. But he, um, so he goes and <coughs> essentially like overhears her confession, yeah. you know, to the whoever. Like, I'm not real yeah. up on like Catholic terminology. Yeah, the guy that was above her. her the boss. guy, right, right, right. Her so boss. she's doing the confession. And he overhears her saying that it's like, yeah, I knew who it was. Like, they just live around here. And she knew their names because they were kids that came to that church or whatever. And, but she's like, but I'm not going to tell you who they are because she forgave them. Yeah. Even though, let's talk about this because the rape scene in this is pretty nasty. And like a lot of that got cut out for some releases uh, in certain countries and stuff, which I can, I can see that. But, um... So, so they not only, like, it's two guys raped her, but they also, um, now the crucifix, did they, like, just rape, like, rape her with it, like, vaginally, or did they stick it up her butt? They just said vaginally, for what they said. Because I thought that, okay. I read somewhere else that somebody said that she was maybe sodomized they, with the maybe crucifix. Maybe they cut that part out. But I'm not really sure. It wasn't in I'm the pretty audio. sure the, the, well, we saw, like, Xanada sent us the, yeah. the nice, you know, uh, Blu-ray of it. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that that's the uncut version. Okay. Because I heard about... Now, the cut version had, like, five and a half minutes cut out. All right. Um, they took out the whole scene, pretty much the whole scene, where he jerks off in front of the two girls in the car. Yeah. They took out almost that entire scene. Yeah. Um, some of the rape... See, they left some of it in, but they trimmed some of it out. So it wouldn't seem so, quote-unquote, erotic. Yeah. Um, you know, because some people had a problem with that. So they took some of that out. They took out, you know, the part where they were obviously really using drugs. Um... So there was that, but I think they would like five minutes took out, but all of that stuff was in the version that, that Xanada sent us. Yeah. So that's assuming okay. the, on the young But I don't version. think they mentioned any anal action. No, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know if just, yeah. I read that somewhere and I was just kind of like, well, are they just, you know, projecting or I don't yeah. really know, but yeah. So she's, but uh, there was not, a crucifix. Involved. Not get, not giving up the information and Kaitel goes off and does some other shit. He's gambling some more, but he keeps coming back to this case and keeps fucking with him. And he's like, who are you? To forgive these guys, they could go out and do this to some other woman, other nuns, and you know he had a lot of good arguments, you know, about no, let me let me get them, you know, and he just starts getting real frustrated, real furious about it because she's not giving up the information. And um, there's a scene after she basically walks off from him, I think, in a church, right? Yeah, because and he she's just like, fucking hey. loses it. I yeah. forgive them, and that's yeah. like the end of it. Yeah. But the thing about it, it's like I don't. I don't even think, because of how it ends, I don't think he's so much furious at her. He just can't believe it. Can't believe it. Yeah, he well, can't yeah. believe that someone would could forgive yeah. something like that. Yeah. And so the fact that she's able to do that maybe yeah. makes him think, well, maybe I can be redeemed also, even though I'm a, an actual piece of shit. Yeah, I, I don't... It, it, I, had to, I had to see this several times, I think, and I had to get my own interpretation of exactly what happened. She walks off from him and leaving him in a church, and he's just fucking losing it. He's howling. Yeah, he's like howling. He's howling like a fucking sorry, broken wolf sorry. and shit. And he starts cursing God and shit, and then he sees Jesus. And he's like going, standing. But... Yeah, and he sees him in between the pews, you know, and he's going, ah, you fuck, what do you want? 
You better let, you got something to say to me? Where, where you were are? you? Where yeah. the fuck were you? Yeah, fuck were you? And it's, where the fuck were you? It's you pretty know? creepy. Like, yeah, the yeah, way they have creepy. that Jesus standing there is, like, yeah, super yeah. creepy. It creeps me out. He's crawling towards it, you know. He called it, you fuck. You fuck. He's fucking frustrated as fuck. And, um, and it, Jesus reaches down to, like, touch him or something like that. Or he, he kisses his feet. Kisses like. his feet. He's kissing his feet. Jesus reaches down to touch him like that. And he snaps out of it. some black ch- lady there in between the pews. But she's got the chalice. <laughs> Yeah. The chalice that was missing. She says, yeah, she says, yeah, yeah there's somebody like pawned this at my yeah. husband's pawn shop. So he was out of it, fucking losing it, and seeing hallucinations, but in a way, it was like a gift from God. The chalice came. Right. And it kind of leads down a, a path of events that happened that make you think it's kind of like a, a story of, I don't know, Salvation through forgiveness, basically. But that's have, it's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, but that you, but you got to pay penance, which means you have to die for your sins. Yeah, was, he did die for his sins at the end. I but saw a uh, review call this like a passion play. Yeah, that is essentially what this yeah. is. He's like an evil Jesus, or or and then uh, I'd watch that movie. <laughs> okay. Evil Jesus. An evil Jesus would have been like Barabbas. He's, he might be like a Barabbas character. Yeah, maybe you know so. I mean? Well, like I said, Abel Ferreira, Judas. very, very Catholic filmmaker. A lot yeah. of his, pretty much all of his movies that I know of have very, very heavy Catholic themes and Catholic yeah. imagery. And this one does, too. Yeah. No, it's probably not Barabbas. It's probably Judas. Because Judas was a, tra- was, was, was a traitor in, in many of the stories. There's a bunch of different versions of the Judas story. There was a gospel of Judas. It's not canonized, but it's out there. But he ends up dying anyway. For his sins, so he might be a, like a Judas. He calls character. someone Judas. Does he? The guy. Yeah. Remember when they're in the bar, um, and the guy. Um, I can't remember what the guy's name is, but the guy that places all his bets, mm-hmm. like with the bookie or whatever, and he's talking to that guy, and the guy's just like, "Look, you know, you already are in the hole," because he keeps saying like he, he keeps losing each game because yeah. he's betting on each game. And he's like, no, just double the bet on the next one, and that'll like pay it off. You know what I mean? So he's just getting like deeper and deeper in the hole. And the guy keeps telling him, like, look, it's like this dude is gonna fucking kill you. He's gonna blow up your house, like with yeah. your wife and kids in it, if you don't pay him off. And so he says stuff like that. And then Harvey Keitel calls him Judas at that yeah. point too. So like I said, just like a lot of Abel Ferreira's other movies, this one is very. This is really. It's so weird because this movie is like really religious. Like I said, it's it's like a passion play essentially, yeah. but it's also like super sleazy. Yeah. Like you will need a shower afterward, probably. Yeah. All, all of all of the characters, most of the characters, not the nun, but all the characters are sacrilegious bad people. Yeah, they're just they, all scumbags. Scum. Everyone's just scumbags, including the cops. They're all scumbags. Yeah, and it, well, I mean, he's the worst, but I mean, you know, but that's the thing. It's just kind of like. And the weird thing about it, because Tom's, like, watching this, because I'd seen it before, like, a long time ago. I might have seen this in the theater now that I'm thinking about it. But um, he's like, this He's like this movie doesn't really have a plot, per se. It's more like a slice of life. It's kind of like a slice of life or, like, a character study. Yeah. But it it kind of reminds me of Taxi Driver, is yeah. what it reminds me of a yeah. little bit. But it does, a, a plot does start forming out of there. It's just, it's not real obvious at first. There's a couple things going on. He's fallen deeper into debt. His time is running out. His his life is not gonna fucking is not going well. Um, he's done a lot of evil shit. All right, he's abused his own authority. He's a fucking scumbag. Yeah, big time. He ends up, I guess, redeeming himself. But I find it questionable. He gets the he finally once he gets a hold of the chalice, he's able to track down the kids that did it. Yeah, the rapists. Yeah, and he breaks into their apartment and gets high and holds them at gunpoint and then gets high with them. Yeah, gives them some crack. They yeah, had. they had a smoke. He's like, crack. hey, you want the good shit? And then They're he like, fuck, yeah. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then he handcuffs them together and wraps his jacket around the handcuffs so nobody can see it. And he basically kind of abducts them in his car. Mm-hmm. And the whole time he's like threatening, he's thinking about killing them. But he's not, and he doesn't. He takes them to the bus station and unhandcuffs them. And says, you get the fuck out of here. And he says a lot of, basically, he's kind of glitching out. And he gives them the money that he had. $30,000. It was $30,000. But it was what he was originally going to 
pay for the bet in case he lost. Right. But he lost that many times over. He got it he, from a drug dealer. Got it from like, a drug dealer. Right. So he gives them the money. He's cursing them as he's doing it. He gives them the money to basically start a new life and to get it because he said, said, "Don't come back to New York. Your your life is shit here, basically." And they were living in squalor. You know? Yeah. And they were they were young, I guess, twenties. So they uh, he he gets he let allows them to escape New York. Yeah. With thirty thousand dollars. And he's still yeah, real conflicted about it. You know, and he walks back to his car, and he, he's still kind of cussing himself and cursing God and shit. Gets in the car, drives off, and stops at a light, and so fucking another car passes him and goes, "Hey, cop!" Boom, boom, boom. They, they shoot him up and kill him. It was over the over the the, the, the gambling debt. They just kill. Well, him. yeah, because remember yeah. he discussed that he's like, yeah. "Well, I'm gonna place that bet." They were supposed to meet the next day. Yeah. So I'm assuming that the that's how the guy knew who he was, like that they. Yeah. Him. The lieutenant knew his life was over. I, he knew that they, he wasn't going to be able to pay the $120,000. Yeah, because he, just, he seemed just very resigned. Yeah. Like, after, because he's sitting there with the two kids, the two rapists, yeah. you know, holding them at gunpoint, smoking crack, and they're watching the game. And so, you know, the, the Dodgers yeah. lose, so he realizes now he's $120,000 in the hole. Yeah, he and he doesn't nowhere. get upset about it or no. anything. He's just very resigned. He's like, well, that's the end of that. You yeah. know what I mean? Whereas before, he was, like, freaking out. Like, he was, like, yeah. the the one game that he lost, uh, he was listening to it in the car, and he, like, shot the fucking car yeah, radio. Yeah, shot the fucking ra- radio. <laughs> like, out. And then tried to play it off. He was in downtown. He was he like, like fucking Broadway. Yeah. And he's, like, <laughs> in downtown New York and shit. Look at the- he, he, he put his siren on and laughed. <laughs> what? What are you looking at? I'm a yeah. cop. I can do whatever the he's fuck I want. He's fucking crazy. He's yeah, crazy. he's in that case in this. He's crazy. But it's a great, I mean. Good movie. It's a great character study. Like yeah. I said, you'll feel like really, because after the movie was over, Tom was like, wow, that was a downer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a downer. For like for a Friday night. Like I said, yeah. you will definitely feel like it's a very scuzzy movie. Like it's very like I said, Abel Ferreira, like he's kind of that yeah. gritty New York. All of like all of this was filmed without permits. Um, they just like showed up, and which I think he did showed all of his did, films yeah. that way. Um, so when you see like reaction shots of like people in the background, that's like absolutely real. Those are just like real ass people just going yeah. about their New York City business. And here's Harvey Keitel shooting his car radio. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of so I guess because they didn't have a permit to shoot that scene, I wondered if they'd be like, "What the fuck is going?" On yeah. There? <laughs> Yeah. The New Yorkers is, can handle it, especially old school New Yorkers. They're just kind of like, Those whatever. They're like, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> That's how that shit goes. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is that <laughs> I love New Yorkers, though. Yeah. I love them for that reason because they're just like, yeah. Well, they're tough. <laughs> they're not dealing with Boston. I live there. So, you yeah, know, I live in Boston. They used to go to New York all the time. There's a big difference between the places. I'd probably take New York over Boston, especially old New York. New York right now, nah. Boston right now, nah. But fucking back in the day, back in those days that this was filmed, you know, you could do more. I'm better. pretty sure that the crime that's kind of at the center of this movie, which is like the the rape of the nun, that was kind of loosely based on a real crime that happened in New York City in 1981, I think it was. So they actually kind of used that. So I think they had like the cop that was investigating that, like sort of consulting on the movie. Um, interestingly, the one scene where he pulls over those two girls that are teenagers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've, they're, they're under. They're supposed to be teenagers. Well, yeah, they're supposed to be teenagers. You're def- they're obviously they're underage. Teenagers. They're supposed to be underage. And yeah. they've, um, you know, they've been out to a club and they have taken their dad's car, like, without him knowing about it. They, you know, that's what Harvey Keitel discovers. And so, obviously, he's going to use this situation to his advantage. But I'm, it, it's interesting because this scene doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. Because you think that, and the way that he's talking, you're just kind of like, yeah, he's going to make one of these girls blow him. Yeah. And then, which it kind of seems like it's going to go that way, like the way he's talking. Because he's like, you ever suck a guy's cock? You ever yeah. suck a guy? Like, he yeah. starts saying that. And um, so then you're like, oh, shit, you know how this is going to go? But it doesn't quite go that way. No. He just... Makes him simulate fellatio. Makes that one simulate fellatio. Why he yeah, like it. she has to stand there like looking yeah. like an idiot. Yeah, and then the other like with her mouth open like that. And then he's just like jerking it, like yeah. looking in the car. And then the other girl's on her knees, turned around backwards in the passenger seat with her booty in the air, so but he can look at her. It's ass. not as yeah. The thing is, is I remembered seeing this when it came out, you know, and I remembered it being a lot more graphic than it really was. You see it again, and you you can't really see that girl's booty. 
I remember seeing the booty. Yeah, because it's kind of like the, dark in the car. Yeah, I thought the booty, in my mind, was pressed up against the window. You could see everything. That's no, just a, That was wishful thinking. That was just how I remembered it. That's not how... I was imagining Tom imagined the booty. Nice, brown booty. <laughs> panties and shit pressed up against... That's how I remembered it. No. 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 You can, no, you can barely see it. You can barely see it. Because you're looking inside the car. Yeah. You're mostly seeing things from... It's not, you know, it's not like, um, the thing about his movies is that they're really realistic. They're very grounded. They, you know, they don't have like a lot of artful shots or anything like that. They're filmed almost, I don't want to say like too much like documentary style, but almost like that. Cause it's like guerrilla filmmaking. You know what I mean? Like I said, he doesn't have any permits or nothing. So he's just kind of, yeah. uh, filming stuff like catches catch can kind of. Yeah. This era of filmmaking, you know, of course gone, uh, you could probably have some people doing stuff like this but not with legendary actors I mean fucking Harvey this Harvey Keitel even though he, oh, he probably wasn't a legend then but the legend was being built and there you know I knew him from a movie that we watched right after this called Saturn 3 yeah which is a sci-fi horror which movie which is one of his first films he's yeah. quite young he's great in it even though it's not his voice they got him dubbed but they it sounds like him ever. it sounds like him anyway it kind of does. It kind of sounds yeah. like a more refined version of him. Yeah. I get, and we did a review of Saturn Three like a yeah. long time ago, but they dubbed his voiceover because they didn't want. They thought his like Brooklyn accent was too distracting. Didn't make a sense. Didn't make sense. They should have just left an accent like that. Yeah, this, I don't think it, most people. Earth was would've. supposed to be a fucking scum hole anyway. Yeah, so yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. So it probably would have just played into that. Played into it, yeah. Because I think a lot of people have a lot of have a misperception, yeah. especially if they're not from that. Right. Region. But uh, go back and look at our review on that. It was a flawed movie, Saturn Three, but it was kind of a masterpiece because it was almost hit. It parts of it were very good quality, like on par with like I don't know, almost kind of like Alien One, which was, that's what it was competing with. It had good acting. Farrah Fawcett was in it. Uh, Michael Douglas. No, uh, Kirk. Douglas. Kirk Douglas. Yeah, Kirk Douglas was in it. He did a great job. And good, great sets. Run around naked. Yeah, run around. It had shitty, shitty space scenes, which they subbed them out to another. Kind. There was a lot of turmoil on the set, and they were running out of money. Uh, great robot scenes and weird fucking. It's kind of like a Frankenstein story. Kaitel played a cool dude, a cool bad guy, F- fucking psycho, fucking incel, social media motherfucker, cyborg murdered a dude to get on the mission so he could fucking get a fair faucet and he had his job was to put the damn robot together and program it mind to mind bluetooth connection this is way ahead of time for the 80s you know but he failed the test so that he failed the course and that robot came up fucking a psycho thinking that it was him thinking that he it was Carvey Cartel <laughs> Well, it had yeah. his brain tissue. Had his no, in his brain much. tissue. It was cloned it was like cloned brain tissue. Yeah. But it was stealing thoughts from him. Right, it stole his personality from him. Richard Brown said Harvey was in Taxi Driver. Oh yeah, that's right. I haven't seen Taxi Driver in a long time. But that's this right. does he played the pimp. That's right. Yeah. But this does kind of remind me of yeah of Taxi Driver a little bit. This movie because, like I said, it's more. You know, yeah, there's a plot in the sense of, you know, things happen because of other things. And there's, like, the, you know, the rape of the nun and that ki- that investigation, that kind of plays into it. And then, like, him losing all the money, like, with the subsequent vets. Um, you know, so that's kind of a, a through line, too. But I kind of feel like a lot of it is just, like, a study of him. Because I, I was watching, we were watching the movie, and I said, this is, like, the very definition of, like, a downward spiral. Yeah. <laughs> Where he just kind of, he just staggers from one... It's like, you know, he's on the job. It's like, you know, the, he goes to this one crime scene where, like, these two dudes, like, stole some money from, like, a grocer or something like that. And he basically, like, shakes them down for the money. Like, he takes the money that they stole from the yeah. from the grocery store. So, like, he does that. Then he goes, like, and fucks some hookers. Then he goes and, like, shoots up some heroin. And then he yeah. goes and drinks a fuck ton. I'm like, how is this dude yeah. still walking around? Holy fucking shit. Yeah. What constitution? Well, as soon as he got up in the morning, he snorted a bunch of coke. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right off his kids' pictures. Yeah. That was super classy. Yeah. Well, and the thing about it, too, and I think I noticed when we were watching this movie, is that at the end, when he takes, like, the two rapists, and they're in the car with him, and there's that whole discussion, that mirrors that, like, the same, they're in the same positions and stuff like that as his kids were. Because remember, like, at the very beginning of the movie, he's dropping his kids off at school? Yeah. 
and the way that the kids are situated in the because you never really see the kids again but um at least those two boys he's got a bunch of other kids too it looked like because there's a couple other kids running around in the apartment but the two boys like he drops them off and the way they're positioned in the car are exactly the same way that the rapists are positioned at the yeah, end that's right, yeah. so um so th- there's a lot of, like i said there's a lot of thought put into this movie like zoe lund she um wrote the screenplay the original version of the screenplay i heard was only 65 pages which you know if you know anything about screenplays that means the movie would be about an hour and five minutes but um abel ferreira was kind of known for just kind of taking the script and just doing whatever with it like letting um the actors improvise things and just being like well what are we going to do on the day and shit like that so he was just kind of using that for suggestions um the thing about it too was that originally Abel Ferreira said he had intended this movie to be more like a black comedy I'm not really sure like to what extent he meant that but he was like when Christopher Walken was playing the main character because like I said Christopher Walken was in this up until literally three weeks before they started shooting and then he was like nah I'm out um but he's like, you know, the scene with the two girls in the car, like with the yeah. jerking off and everything. He's like, that was actually supposed to be funnier. And like, it was supposed to end like with Christopher Walken, like dancing with them in the street. And like, you know, they were wearing his hat and like his yeah. gun belt and shit like that. I'm like, I'm not sure that would have worked, to be yeah. honest. I mean, I think it was the way that the scene played out because they said they kind of let Harvey just do it yeah. like that. Oh, and I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I read this somewhere. One of the women that was playing one of the girls in the car, yeah. pretty sure one of, that she worked for Harvey Keitel like as a nanny. Okay, yeah. And so they asked him, they're like, is this going to be weird? Because mm. that's like your babysitter, right? right? Yeah. He's like, no, no, I want to try something. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> if you've seen that scene, I'm just like, now that makes it like super weird. <laughs> but it's like, I really like the way, I don't know. I just, I like the way he played it. It was really... Real cringy. It was tense and cringy because you weren't really sure how it was going to go. Yeah. And he was just being so, like, creepy and, like, intimidating. Yeah. You're like, you just know this is going to go bad, but you don't know exactly you in know, what him way. him standing out there in fucking New York traffic. The headlights going on while he's out there jerking it beside this damn car. Looking into... Th- and he, as a plainclothes policeman. Yeah. It was pretty fucking creepy. That's what and I I'm mean. Like, it's like, can you imagine? Like, it if you got traffic police. doing that shit. Right. Like, cars, <laughs> cars are going, going by. by <laughs> And like I said, when you, when we said that they shot this movie without any permits or anything like that, so it's like those are real life cars, and he's just out there like. And the thing I don't know, like you can't really tell from the scene. I've heard again, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard that another take that they did of it, like he actually did like jerk off for real and like you know, yeah, finished all over the car. That's what I heard, but I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know unlikely. if that's, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, unlikely. but I heard that that was with his babysitter take. in there. I'm like, maybe that's what he wanted to try. Maybe they had something going on. Can you can you imagine if you worked, that was like your employer and you were both <laughs> actors and then like you had to do that scene. It's like, that would be so fucking awkward the next day. Yeah. Then so you had to go and like watch, the, like watch their kids. She's like, hey, I just saw you jerk off all over my face. That's like, Damn. that's a little weird. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. So I, I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, let's see. Gramther said, I worked with some low end types, but never as bad as the bad lieutenant. Well, Jesus Christ, I hope not. Yeah. This dude, every single vice you can think of. I mean, he was an alcoholic. He was a drug addict. He was, went to hookers. He stole money. Um, he was like corrupt. He was a gambling addict. It's just like. He victimized the fucking public. Yeah. I mean. He's a criminal. <laughs> right. So it's just kind of, I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah. is there anything you haven't done that yeah. it's just, he, did he, he killed people? Did he kill people? Uh, did he kill anybody in this movie? I didn't write, no, I don't remember. I don't think anybody. he killed anybody. No. I mean, like at the end, you thought that he was going to kill the rapist because that's yeah. clearly what he wanted to do. Yeah. Like when he was talking to the nun, he was just like, let me go, like, let me get revenge on them. Like he didn't understand I got it to reset. I oh, just, it came I just, back on? I just held both buttons down for a long time. And oh, okay. Actually did. Yeah. Fucking having problems with that. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Stardog78 said, My favorite Harvey Keitel character was Victor the Cleaner in Point of No Return. Man, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. That's another one we need to see. Man, we're like so behind. Um... Cramther said, in today's environment, the bad lieutenant would be fired very quickly. Well, I should hope they should have fired him back then. But I kind of feel like the... Well, the other cops in this, they don't... Uh, like... 
you're led to assume that the other cops, while not as terrible as the bad lieutenant, they really don't seem to give that much of a shit. Especially the one scene near the beginning of the movie, which, like I said, those two girls get shot in the head and they're just, like, in the car, dead, in the middle of Union Square. And there's, there's you know, there's onlookers, like, all around and there's all these cops. And it's just, like, they're looking in there going, yeah, that sucks, or whatever. And then, like I said, Harvey Keitel is just, like, looking at her tits. But then, like, the other cops... He just walks over there, and they just immediately start talking about, like, the baseball game and, like, yeah. what bet they're going to play. So they don't well, give a shit about Well, it was just work. They see that shit right. all the time. But uh, I guess is what they were – they're just kind of hardened up to it. Right. You know? But that's what I'm saying. It's just they didn't really seem to have – and they knew for sure that Harvey Keitel – I mean, he was the one that was putting in all the bets, like, with the bookie and stuff like that. Yeah. So they knew for real that he was – at least into that. I don't know if they knew about, like, his alcoholism or his drug, his copious drug use or anything like that, but I just kind of feel like they didn't really... I don't know. Because, like I said, he was stealing drugs from crime scenes and then kind of selling it to drug dealers or, they, or then they were giving him a cut or whatever. Because remember that one, <laughs> the one scene where he goes to the crime scene, like I said, and he's like, oh, anybody looked in the car? And they're like, no. And one of his informants, I'm assuming... It was also like a sex worker and she's like oh i heard there was a key of cocaine in the car and he's like oh okay i gotta check that car out so he finds it and then he puts it in his jacket but then like he's kind of inebriated and so he <laughs> gets it out slips, of the car, and it yeah. falls out of his jacket yeah. and the cop sees it the other cop sees it and he's just like oh yeah like book that in evidence but i'm pretty sure that other cop was just like what was that doing in your jacket motherfucker you know what i mean so I kind of uh, feel yeah. like the other cops probably knew what he they was knew, up to. They, they also knew he played it off. I don't think they really cared that much, though. That's what I'm saying. They didn't really... like. They first that they kind of did the same thing every now and then. Right, right. Granther said, that's why this movie isn't that real. In real life, the vast majority of cops would not turn a blind eye to his bullshit. Well, I would hope, yeah. I would hope not. Because, I mean, this dude was just a public menace. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I have to say, too, like... I kind of agree with you on the on the deal with I get that the narrative of the movie is like his passion play. So it's like him uh, seeking forgiveness or learning to forgive others and learning to forgive himself, I think, was kind of what the point of the story was. But I think when he talks to the nun and he basically te like she says, I forgive them. And that's like the end of it. And he's like, well, what right do you have to forgive them? Because it's like, what if they go and do this to somebody else? And I kind of agree with him on that. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I don't, like, because that seems a little, to me, I'm not a Catholic, so I don't really know. But I, to me, it seems a little self-centered. Yeah. To be like, oh, well, I forgive them and, like, that's fine. So which which you can do. That's cool. But I don't think that that means that they should be immune from punishment because like i said they're still running around loose on the street if they did that to you they're gonna do it again yeah. and so by not naming them you're kind of responsible for letting them run around free and if it happens to somebody else that's kind of on you a little bit just saying so i kind of feel like maybe that's i don't know so that just seemed like a very self-absorbed way of looking at things like yeah. at, for, at forgiveness perhaps yeah well that's why i said he supposedly did something that atoned. Right. Uh, no. Those did. I mean, it was, like no. I said, this, I get, it's, it's a character yeah. study. It's a personal journey for him. Like I said, learning to forgive. Uh, he was but kinda, don't let those fucking motherfuckers He was kind of caught for. in a rock in a hard place in a way because if he, were, if he were to have arrested them, all right, she wouldn't have testified against them. So right. they'd have to let him go. So they would have had to get let so go. So he only had two choices. Let him go or kill him. Or kill him. And that's why he was that's what he was thinking about. He almost killed him, but he let him go. Maybe kill yeah, him. maybe that's the thing. Well yeah, probably. <laughs> should have killed him. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, probably, I probably would have too. Yeah, you can't let him go. Yeah, because like I said, if they, they went if they went and did that to somebody else, I'd feel really yeah. bad. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So I I don't know. Grabbers, that's why I should never be a cop. I made a good soldier, make a good fucking special operative and shit like that. I could never be a cop. I don't believe in the system. <laughs> I believe in human duty and action. Well, maybe that's like, yeah, that's like a good way of putting it because like you said, if he had gone through the system, yeah. like they, because she wouldn't testify, even though she knew who yeah. she, they were, um, then they probably would have got off anyway because they yep. wouldn't have had enough evidence. Yep. So, so like you said, he only had the choice between those yeah. two things and he's like, well, the old me would have just like shot him in the head and like yeah. not even thought about it. Yeah. I think that's what the old, but I think he originally was going to do that. 
Right, but then he yeah. thought, well, I'm going to try and be... Because yeah. like I said, I think that the nun... The thing is, he was, was, I think that's the good thing to do, though. My interpretation of fucking morals is a lot different than other people. The right thing to do is to fucking put those two, put those two dogs down. That's the good thing. The evil thing to do is to let them go. Yeah. They'll I, reoffend. I mean, I would imagine. And, and, Especially something as egregious as that crime yeah. that they had committed. It would yeah. be different if it was something that wasn't that bad. And I'm not going to say justice wouldn't be served because I'm not arrogant enough to believe in justice. I believe in vengeance. I said vengeance was not served. You know? I'm, I'm not apologetic about how I think. I'd have fucking killed both those dudes. Like I said, not going to lie. I probably and then didn't. went, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but mm, yeah so I don't know so that was kind of one thing but like I said it's not I mean the point of the movie was is coming from a very Catholic place of yeah. forgiveness and he's also learning to forgive himself I guess because like you said he knew that his days were numbered yeah. essentially I think he knew deep down that he was yeah. gonna get killed that day right. and so he thought well, what is what do i want my last action on earth to be do i want it to be like just taking out these motherfuckers or do i want to follow the example of the nun and be the bigger person or turn the other cheek or whatever so he wanted that to be like the last thing that he did and hope that it redeemed him i guess did it we don't know but it's, jesus didn't say anything when he was standing there <laughs> Yeah. That was so fucking creepy. How did they, like... Was that a person? Was that a real person? Or was it, like, a statue? Or... I couldn't really tell. Of Jesus? It was yeah. A real, it was a real guy. He moved. That was... Remember, yeah, that's right. He did kind of, like, move yeah, his yeah, hands yeah, and stuff. Because for a long time, he was just standing there really still. And he was standing, like, oh, like a little bit crooked. Almost like Jesus would like be, like, when he was on the cross. Yeah, yeah. But he was standing on the ground. Yeah, yeah. So he was standing, like, kind of crooked. So it was really unsettling. Yeah. Well, and then it, I'm sitting there looking at it going, is that a person? Or is, like, a statue? Like, you couldn't really tell. It was they really had him, They had him in a religious position, like, in a religious painting. Or in a statue. That's why he was in that weird... You know what I mean? Yeah. Religious icons are painted or that way or something. Yeah, that like way. I said, that's what was so unsettling yeah. to me. It almost didn't look like it, it was a real, real person. It, yeah. It, Oracle it, says she makes the point that she can forgive them and still cooperate with making sure they face the consequences. Yeah, see, that's what she should have done. I think the problem I had, you know, yeah, it's all well and good to, like, forgive them. You could personally, you can forgive them if you want to. That's entirely up to you. But not cooperating with the police or like naming them so they can face consequences so they can be punished or like be taken off the street so they don't do it to someone she else wouldn't testify. that's like really irresponsible she wouldn't testify basically she's saying that it was consensual so you could, could have never gotten a conviction yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. and, and like i said they did like i mean and they showed in the scene like the scene is really uncomfortable to watch she said it was like. her duty as a christian to be like christ and to suffer and that those that those that those kid that those guys they were, were like an agent that, of her suffering. Yeah, they were an agent of her suffering. That those guys were uh, innocent because they they were the needy and just like the needy, they're rude and blah 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 blah. It's just no different than anything else. She rationalized it. She did, yeah. But um, yeah, she there's was like wrong. a long yeah. She was wrong. Okay, just that's a very airy fairy religious way of interpreting something to make your ideology seem true. That's all it is. Making your own ideology seem true. That's what most rationale is. To be honest, the speech that she gave in the confessional, where she was talking about the needy, yeah. it came off as a little arrogant. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. It was arrogant. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of yeah. interesting. She was making herself seem very important. Yeah. You know? And that this was an important sacrifice. But that's a lot of fucking religious mumbo-jumbo. Your own religious sacrifice, and that your suffering is important, and that it that it validates what you believe in. You know, it's like okay. I said. It seems very that seems very self centered. Yeah, it and then and then you know you're gonna take it upon yourself to let these guys r walk free, so they could victimize another woman, and then never pay for what they did. You know, like I said, I don't believe in justice per se, but I believe in vengeance. I've just seen too many people fucking just blown up or killed for nothing, you know? And then people that deserve it not get it? No, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't. But like yeah. I said, I think that was kind of the point, though. 
Yeah. Strong in 78 said supposedly Zoe Lund, who, like I said, was the writer, uh, was a victim of sexual assault when she was real young. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, so I always felt the key to understanding the movie was through the nun. Yeah, and she, I mean, she wrote a lot of those lines, I think. She wrote a lot of her own lines, because she was in this, too. She played, like, the, you know, the heroine, uh, you know, the heroine dealer or whatever. But, um, and she, so she kind of wrote all of that stuff. And I am not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if she intended, like, the nun to come off like that, but that's how she came off to me. But like I said, I'm not Catholic. Um, Strong 78 said, I am Catholic, but I agree with Tom and Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bitch gotta pay. You know, and that's what that's really at least what, so they don't make other people suffer. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the main thing. I guess you could say, well, the Bible would say in some places that the vengeance is mine. You know, that the Lord, it's a, not yours. In other words, that the Lord meets out the fucking punishment. But then they'll turn around and just prescribe punishment for other people for breaking rules and shit. So, no, in 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 Christianity, you should punish punish people for the evil shit that they do. Yeah, it clearly says and that. like I said, I don't, and we've talked about this before because, particularly in regards to somebody like Carl Panzeram, yeah. um, where I don't think that you should put people in prison and like make them suffer horribly as well, um, just because that's going to make them worse. Particularly if you want to release them back into society, but I don't think that you should let them run like people like that run around free either. There's some people to that victimize can't be released. other people. There's yeah, people that and that released. that's the thing. Yeah. Just keep them away from other people. That's all I'm saying. Any kind of aggravated rape like that? No, you, that, they can't be. Released. Yeah, because I mean that was like They'll that was that was bad. Yeah. That was bad. Like what they did yeah. to her. They'll do it again. But that's what. But it, you know, in the context of the movie, it had to be bad because yeah. it had to like shake Harvey Keitel's character out of his holy shit. If somebody can forgive that, then you know maybe there's hope for me. Like re, you know redemption for me yeah. because look what she forgave. Yeah. That was like super fucked up. But still, like I said, I just, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not a Catholic. I wasn't raised Catholic, and I understand that like people that were raised Catholic, they have like a particular thing, and they have like a particular mindset that because I I've known some that were like lapsed Catholics, but a lot of times that mindset that um, it never really goes away. I feel like completely, yeah. you know, especially if you were raised with it. Richard Brown says the Old Testament God w was vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. And then, if you if you really look at the covenant that uh, Yahweh, Yahweh or uh, <clears throat> El Shaddai, depending on whatever role he was in at the time, <clears throat> the covenant between him and Israel was basically like a gangster's fucking covenant. There was no choice. I choose you. You do this. If not, I fucking smite you. You know. But <clears throat> the original, the original. Hebrew God is a demiurge, basically a devil god. He is the devil and God combined. He's a creator and a destroyer. Can reward and punish. Did some weird shit though. Fucking killed Moses before he even fucking finding the Promised Land. <laughs> Just for not believing. Remember that. <laughs> God's kind of an asshole. Yeah, got him out of Exodus. Got him out. Of, got, got took the people out of Egypt and everything. It was just a very uh, uh, gangster God. He was more like a devil in the Old Testament. And it's not just me saying that. Fucking the original early Christians from the fucking second second century and everything. Um, the in in the original canonized Bible, um, it basically said that. Jesus' as God was a new God, and that the old God was a, was the devil, basically. Um, that was uh, what was the the Book of Marcion. That was the original New Testament. But then, the New Testament that you have today and you believed in was written as a direct response to the Book of Marcion. That came out and fucking redeemed the Old Testament gods. Oh no 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 no, the old Jewish God. We're not throwing that away. It, he was good too. We're gonna combine that. But this is the, the the form of Christianity that we inherited, was the one from New Testament. I agree with Book of Marcion more than, or what we know of it. It's been purged out. But descriptions of what was in the Book of Marcion, we pretty much know. And it said that <clears throat> Yahweh, or El Shaddai, which is God Almighty, or Father of the Gods, he was a demiurge. 
a devil god. Jesus' God was a fucking universal cosmic God. And in the book of Marcion, there doesn't Jesus was never anything I don't think Jesus was anything that was ever born. I think he was a celestial being, like Gabriel. Strato seventy eight said Old Testament was the divine justice God, New Testament was golden rule God. Choose your testament, choose your own adventure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like it's that. narrative, man. It's narrative. Yeah. American Military 100 says, Speaking of movies with Catholic and religious themes, The Exorcist Believer bombed at the test, test screening. Audiences booed and some walked out. I wonder why. I haven't really heard anything about that one, so I don't really know uh, how that's going to go, but I don't know. I keep saying like we're going to see stuff when it, when it comes out, but yeah. we haven't seen any new stuff. Oh, look, I still want to see The new Red Exorcist, they boo people booed it? Well, it was at test screening, oh. so I'm not really sure. Like It might still be in that stage. That's uh, that's the, the Pope's Exorcist? No, no, no. That's already out. Okay. That's, already so that's out. not the one you're talking about. No, no, no. This is a, this is a new one. Okay. Um, but yeah, this movie here, uh, getting back to Bad Lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, this I think it premiered at Cannes, and... Pretty universally loved, I feel like. Um, critics were really into it, like, compared it to early Martin Scorsese. Um, I read, actually, Robert Roger Ebert's review. He fucking loved this movie. And he, um, he said what I was thinking about it. He's like, Harvey Keitel, it's like, you don't usually see an actor of that, uh, that's that famous or, you know, of that caliber, like, just letting it all hang out like that. And so you really kind of have to. And like I said, he didn't want to do it at first. Like, when he first read the shit, he's just like, yeah, no. It's good I, acting. I don't know if I really... But, I mean, I can't imagine good. anybody else in that role now. Yeah, I can't act. imagine it's it. It's good acting, and you can kind of imagine, you, like, sometimes, you know, you can imagine yourself when you're in the dumps. You're like, yeah, it's kind of like that guy. You know? <laughs> I'm feeling like that guy. You know? I, I, I understand Hopefully you, you never have a day like Bad yeah, Lieutenant. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking howling like a wolf. I mean, shit. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Making the faces and yeah. stuff. I was like, man. Worried about all that debt he's accruing. From many, fucking... many times during the film, I was like, man, Harvey's having a rough time. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. having a rough time. Yeah. And like uh, many times too, I was just kind of like, here he goes again. Like he's just going from one thing to another. Like he's at a club, like doing shots. And then he's like snorting like bumps of cocaine and he's yeah. like doing heroin i'm like how is this guy still on his feet holy shit i don't uh, like uh i just can't even imagine how somebody could do all that stuff and still be like walking around and functioning and talking and stuff mm -hmm. like he was still you know he was kind of out of it yeah. but not really like he could still drive a car and shit but i was like man that, that dude's got uh, he's hardcore you know what i mean yeah but well, uh, seven o'clock let's go ahead and shut this down jim Okay. We got a bunch of shit we got to do tonight. Yeah, there is. We do. Have and I still got to transfer all the damn files. Yeah, all the shit we shot today. All yeah. the shit we shot today. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you didn't notice, I actually put up two, count them, two videos today. I put one over on my Crime and Memorial uh, channel, which was about uh, Valerie Percy, the murder case from 1966, Unsolved. And I also put up a movie review on Flickers of Fear uh, that was Tombs of the Blind Dead from 1972, the Spanish cult horror film. So if you haven't seen those or you didn't notice that I put those up, then, you know, go check them out because that would be cool. I didn't know if anybody saw that I put them up. I just put them up not too long ago. So, uh, so yeah. So, everybody have a happy Mother's Day out there. What remains of it? Tomorrow's Monday, so it's going to be a haunting Mondays. We're actually going to be doing, um, I think it's called Back from the Grave. That was the next one on the thing, because we're still doing season five. So, I think it's season five, episode seven. And I'm pretty sure it's called Back from the Grave. Not Echoes from the Grave. That's a different one. This is Back from the Grave. So, that's the one we're going to do. So, if you want to watch it ahead of time so you can play along with us on the show tomorrow night then um you know then go ahead and do that um yeah american military 100 said exorcist believer is a sequel to the exorcist with ellen burston reprising her role oh yeah i remember hearing about that oh shit okay well we'll have to see how that goes then because i can't believe that that's right i heard they were doing that with her in it but yeah so uh so yeah so thank you everybody for dropping by thank you xanada again for sending us the movie we'll be doing the professional too the next time we do a movie review because we got to watch that as well uh so yeah we will see you guys again tomorrow evening good night